Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to this video about JavaScript arrays. So JavaScript arrays are somewhat similar to JavaScript objects, as in that they are used to organize data. So I can make an array by saying const array is, and I can use these um, square brackets, and I can pass in, for example, three values. Now if I lock the array, and run the code. You say no dot main dot js. It will return the array. At least it will log it. Um, now, just as with JavaScript objects, I can um, access a value from this array. But in objects, we do have a key value pair. So, you, but since this um, array does not have any names, it only has values. We can access it by again using the square brackets and now if I type 0 and I run the code it will um, console log 1 and the reason for that is that in arrays we start counting from 0 so this is um, value number 0, 1 and 2 so if I just change this to 2 it will return 3 and if I change it to Five, it will return undefined because that value does not exist in this array. Um, we can also change values. So I could say array, let's target the first value, and I could say I want this to be 99. So if I console lock the array, you will see it um, changes the array. Um, by changing the first value. The next things I'd like to show you are um, array properties. And there's many different array properties out there in JavaScript, but these are, I'd say, the six most important ones. You will use them in your career most, most likely on a, uh, on a daily basis. So I could say array dot length and this will return the amount of items that are in this array. So now if I run the code, you will see it indeed returns three. I can also say array that includes, and now I could, for example, check if the value five is in this array and you know the answer and I know it as well, it will return false. Now, if I would say one, which is in that array it will return true so also you that's something you will use quite often we can also push a new value to this array and then we could say for example array that push and let's push value number 50 to it and now if i console lock the array it will lock the array with the new value at the end. Now these are pretty simple um, array properties. The next ones, map, filter, and reduce are a little more difficult. So if I want to use a dot map, I can say array dot map. And this is an array which consists of numbers. So I will map over each number. And I could, for example, say return the number plus one. So what this is actually doing, this is looping over this array. So for each value, it's going to add one to that value. So now if I lock this and run the code, you will see it return returns a array where every value is increased by one. The next one is filter and I will show you something you also haven't seen before. So I could say, for example, I want to return the number if it's not equal to, oops, if it's not equal to two. So before I've showed you the triple equal sign, which stands for equal, including checking the type. Now, if you want to do a not equal to, you have to use the exclamation mark and two equal signs. So this, what this will do, this will return now an array without the number two. 
so it should return an array with number 1 and 3. Let's run the code, and there we go. We've got our array with just two values in it. Now, the next one is reduce, and this is often used if you want to sum values in an array. So this one works a little different. So I can say, here you can already see it. Um, we will take the previous value. Most people will say accumulator. And it will then take the current value. And we will then return the accumulator plus the current value. And now if we lock this, it will sum up this array and thus will return six. Now what it does, it keeps every time the, um, the summed amount in memory, which will be the accumulator. So how this is working, it first checks, okay, we don't have, the accumulator is nothing, so we'll set it to zero. And then we take the current value, which is one, and then for the, it loops over, it goes over to the next value and it will say, okay, I have value one in memory and it will add two to it. And that's how the reduce um, property works. Now what you often see in web applications is that you will get a response from a server um, with data and it is a array of objects. So let's, for example, go to twitter.com slash Brandon Ike. Yeah. Oh, he does. I think I made the typer right here. Brandon Ike. I think I made the typer right here. Wait a second. Twitter, Brandon Ike. There we go. All right. So if you didn't know about him yet, this is the creator of JavaScript. But to get back to our example, what could happen right here is that the Twitter API is re returning the tweets of Brandon Ike. So it could look something like this. We will get an array of objects and we will keep it simple for now. For example, we could say the date of the tweet was, I'll just give it a month, let's say April. And the text itself is, for example, Laura Mipsum one. And the likes are 232. There we go. Now, of course, he has more tweets, so we will have more objects. So this is a very common um, thing in JavaScript, arrays of objects. Now, what I could do, I could, for example, what let's say I want to have the, um, t the actual string of the second object in this array. I could say console log tweet dot, and we want to have the, oops, I want to have the second value. So that would mean we start from zero. So one, oh, sorry, zero, one. So, and now we can access it because we are now inside of that property. So I could say, I want to have the text. You see my code editor also already is seeing it. And then I could lock this and now we get lorem epsom one. But of course I should change this. So it makes it a little bit more clear that we are actually getting the text value of the second object. So that's pretty much all there is for JavaScript arrays. Um, thanks for watching and I see you in the next video.